The Nigerian entertainment industry is currently the second most prolific film industry in the world. Or well, some would say it's the first. It's a globally recognized brand for practitioners in film, including script writing, directing, uh, sound, acting, cinematography, makeup, as well as editing. But according to estimates, Nollywood was valued at $3.6 billion in 2016 and is projected to be worth $6.4 billion by 2021. The music sector also recorded significant growth over the years. The industry has the potential to become the country's greatest export with a projected annual growth rate of 8.6% and a compound annual growth rate of 19.3% from 2018 to 2023. Well, on the morning show today, we shall be talking about the American motion picture industry as well as how Africans can break into the global mainstream with Nigerian-born international movie actress Folake Olowo. Olowo Foyeku, who is our next guest. Now, she's won the hearts of critics and audiences as Abishola in Bob Hart's Abishola, an American sitcom television series created by Chuck Law and Eddie Gorodetsky, as well as Al Higgins and Gina Yashari. Well, she received the 2019 Breakout Actress in Television Award for her work on the series on behalf of the SyncCon Honours. Folake, it's an honor to have you on the morning show today. I hope you can hear us. Good morning to you. Oh, yes, oh, I, can hear you. Oh. I can hear you very well. Uh, I was about to say good morning to you, although I know where you are. It is not morning anymore. Thank you for staying up with us. Or is it, rather? <laughs> well, well it's, it's morning. It's it is? 1 a.m. Ah, no, I mean, uh, very, very early it's morning. Actually morning. It's <laughs> actually morning in Los Angeles, Femi. <laughs> the, the earliest of mornings there. Uh, Folake, welcome yeah. to the morning show. Uh, yeah. you know, we're Thanks huge, for having me. Uh, you're more than welcome. We're huge fans of the Bob Hart's Abby Shola series. And I think that, you know, when I first watched it, what I loved was how uh, realistic the experiences of immigrants, Nigerian immigrants are in, in countries like the United States, uh, how you talked about having a child and, you know, having some form of a husband back home in Nigeria and then setting up shop in the States as a nurse, meeting somebody. Tell us why it was important to tell that type of story. Uh, well, it's important to tell that type of story because it exists. It's an accurate representation of what we experience in our everyday life. That's why it's important. It's also important that we are making sure that these stories, when we embark on them, are told as authentically as possible. It's important for us to have people who reflect the characters we're writing in, uh, writing about in the writer's room and behind the scenes, making sure that um, everything's done uh, accurately and for the greatest good. Go ahead, Steve. All right, Falake, good to have you. Hey, Steve, how's it going? My man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks. But uh, <laughs> let me ask you this for like a, I mean, uh, uh, Bob, Bob Hart, Abishola is big here. Yeah? You've got loads and loads of fans, you know, here. And I see that the new uh, season that is on, there's even a lot more in terms of uh, Nigeria's culture uh, that you've packed into it, yeah. the wedding scenes, the dances, you know, and the program makes good use of Nigerian music. I'd like to ask you, uh, is this a deliberate thing and how, um, uh, how do you feel playing such a role uh, projecting uh, the Nigerian, the African culture uh, abroad to, you know, on the highest of the global stage? Uh, what does that make you feel, like an ambassador or something? I feel very proud. I feel like uh, the steps that I I took that led me from from uh, Victoria Island to to Los Angeles um, were worthwhile, especially considering the sacrifices I had to make. I had to leave my home and uh, and pursue my craft in a foreign land. Pretty much start from from the bottom, and uh, it's um, it's gratifying. I um, I'm trying to remember the rest of your question, but it feels it feels great. I don't feel necessarily like I'm an ambassador because sometimes that can be, that can put undue pressure on you. I I see myself as having a platform and um, and able to give 
opportunities to other people in Nigeria who are interested in the arts, um, either by by the work that I'm doing or by actively creating a, a lane for them as well. I mean, still on the topic of including culture within this comedy, as a Nigerian yourself, you'll obviously be well aware that, you know, parts of Bob Hart's Abishola, you'll have actors, you know, speaking in Yoruba, of course, they'll be translated in English. Do you ever feel as though perhaps in the writer's room or when you're, get, when you're reading your scripts, there are some scenes that don't make cultural sense that you'd have to use your own personal experience to correct? Or have the writers uh, been able to, to knock it out of the park per se? How involved are you in making sure the authenticity continues? Well, um, it's, it's, a team, it's a team effort, right? Uh, the writers are brilliant at what they do. The creators and the writers, I mean... <laughs> they do an amazing job. When um, when I'm in the room and I do come across something that's not accurate, I always speak up. It's always a conversation, at least. Uh, sometimes it's changed. Sometimes it's not. Um, you have to remember that while we are depicting a Nigerian a Nigerian woman's experience, it's also um, her experience within America, and then the audience for the show is um, primarily in in America. So there, there are times when um, it's always half and half. There are times when I'm, I'm saying something in Nigerian accent and uh, it's not intelligible enough. So they need me to just insert like an American accent with just that word. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, uh, and it makes sense because the people, the people who the, the show is made for, the American audience that it's made for need to understand what we're talking about and what we're saying. And, uh, and then there are instances like, like in, in the wedding scene, uh, I pitched the idea. I was like, you know, the very end of this scene, it'll be really cool if we just turn the lights off and say, <laughs> and then bring it back on and be like, yeah, up, Nepa. Up Nepa. <laughs> and, and they love that. Yeah, up Nepa. And, and they love that. And, and we kept that. So it's, um, it's teamwork. It's, it's a give and take. But most of the work is done in the writer's room. All right, Falaka, the, the part of my first question that you didn't uh, get uh, was the heavy usage of Nigerian music, you know, contemporary Nigerian music, yes. which is good business as far as intellectual property and, uh, you know, uh, uh, rights are concerned. Uh, but I'm also interested in the part of how the scripting works for uh, Bob Hart's Abishala. Uh, there was an episode that I watched uh, where you were uh, basically translating to Bob uh, the meaning in Yoruba of certain words. But then I'm wondering who, who, who does this uh, translation for you? I'll give you an example, Falake. Uh, when Bob asked you, yeah. um, how do you say I, I love you in Yoruba? And you said Muferoe. And I'm like, no, Falake, that's not, that's not quite correct. Uh, 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 I love you will be Munife, not Muferoe. Muferoe will be, oh, I like, like you. you. You know, that kind of a thing. So, I'm wondering, I mean, the stage is big. So when you communicate uh, something cultural uh, to the world, I, I, who, who works on this, uh, the language part of the script for you guys? Uh, well, I'm not in the writer's room. So I don't know who the go-to <laughs> person is. I do know that we have an expert Yoruba speaker on ground, an Ijesha guy called Bayo. And, um, and I know he helps out a lot, but <laughs> uh, he helps out a lot. But, but that being <laughs> said, his, his role is as a, an actor on the show. So I would defer that question okay. to the writer's room and the creators, because I don't want to speak for them. That's cool. Yeah. Understood. All Understood. Right. I mean, all, right. all I care, you are, of course, a black actress, a beautiful black actress, navigating the space. Why, in, thank you. Uh, <laughs> navigating the space <laughs> over there in the United States, which of course has its own, you know, racial history and that must trickle down in all areas of life, especially entertainment. When it comes to you, I know you have a very decked uh, CV when it comes to the different parts you've played across a whole spectrum of, 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 of dramas, sitcoms. You know, have you experienced racism? Do you think it's d harder to navigate Hollywood as a black woman? What has your experience been like? After living and surviving in Niger, I don't think that anything else can ever be harder. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> from busing, from VI to, to CMS, to Renere, to try to get auditions and all that stuff, when, without, without your family's backing. Um, so that, that was the mindset I was coming from. I was coming from a, oh. nobody I love believes in what I'm trying to do. How do I escape and fulfill my purpose, my calling, what I know is my calling in life? And um, coming from that point of view and going to America, it was instant tunnel vision. If, if there was racism, I didn't care. If people thought a, a Ninja chick with Ninja accent can't make it in this, in this I didn't care. Um, if people thought I was too tall, if people thought my lips were too big, my gap teeth, I didn't give uh, about what anybody had to say or what anybody's prejudices were. Um, there were some instances that I had specific experiences. Um, but again, tunnel vision. And also having dealt with the prejudices that I'd also dealt with in Nigeria from people who look like me, who talk like me, spoke the same languages that I did. It, it didn't have as much weight when I went to a foreign country and experienced those same things, if that, make, if that makes any sense. But um, in general, I was so focused on, on, um, on, on, on the task at hand, if you will, and... Um, and just making it in, in this world and surviving as an artist. So all, all the other stuff was just noise and I tuned it out. Mm -hmm. Okay, before Steve comes in to ask mm -hmm. you his next question, we will take a short break. And when we come back, we will continue on our discussion with you. Please do stay with us. Welcome back to The Morning Show here on Arise News. We are still joined by actress Folake Olowafoyeku, who has been talking to us about her experiences in the Hollywood space as a Nigerian woman. Steve, I know you're still with us. Go ahead and ask your question. All right. Thanks, Adifemi. Uh, Folake, I mean, basically, your story is inspiring. And, and I think that it will serve as uh, inspiration for many uh, young Nigerians who think that, I mean, the thing about talent is that uh, uh, unlike uh, the subject we discussed before now about the dr brain drain affecting the medical sector and the health sector, unlike that sector, for the arts and the creative industry, people just want to fly, people want to travel. And your kind of story inspires a lot of people that, oh, if Olake can get this done with a Nigerian background, uh, going to school in America and then becoming big, uh, uh, me too can do it. I too can go for it. So that for me is uh, the reason why I think that this interview uh, with you is very important. But I know that you also do a lot more than acting. Your music part, for example, uh, is something that I know uh, you like to talk about, uh, especially your new single, uh, which curiously you titled eh -hen, eh -hen, OK OK, in which you play the electric guitar, uh, but more importantly, it's also a kind of uh, remembrance uh, to, you know, in the memory of those who uh, lost their lives and lost property uh, during the NSAS. Tell us about this new single and the music part of your career. So music was actually my first love. That's, um, that's what I wanted to wow. pursue. And uh, I, wow. I kind of, I got into acting because my parents wanted me to be a lawyer and they were specifically opposed to music. So I felt like, well, if I get into acting, maybe they wouldn't mind as much and I can just get right back into music. And, um, but acting kind of took off. So I, I hung out there for a while and music now is something that I, that I pursue passionately. Uh, when, when I have extra time, I dedicate it to that. My name, the name of my new single is called, eh -eh, eh -eh, okay. Okay. And, uh, I wrote this song about 10 years ago and, uh, I do play electric guitar on it. And, um, it's unfortunate that it's still relevant. And so I, I released it on uh, October, October 20th, 2021, a couple of days ago in remembrance and in dedication to 
the amazing, amazing people who who are standing up against the atrocities and the unnecessary conditions that one has to experience in Nigeria. Uh, that has been going on since I lived there. It's still going on today and seems to be getting worse. I mean, 500 and something naira to a dollar, that's crazy. That's unbelievable. Um, so for the song, I, I kind of just approach it from each person's perspective, from an average man, from a mother, and from the perspective of the policemen as well, who I feel are, while also sometimes being a part of the problem, are also victims as well. And um, I'm hoping that we can find a way, a way out of this soon. It's, it's gone on for too long, and Nigerian people deserve better. Absolutely, they do. They do. Thank you very much. Is that an activist? Is that an activist uh, for like a speaking? I, I sense a bit of uh, you know uh, activism in, in what you've just said. I've never been one. I've never been able to tolerate injustice. Is I, I don't like unfair situations personally, and when I see somebody else experiencing it, it's unnecessary. We we always approaching a majority of us are approaching life from a place of scarcity but that's not the case there's abundance there's enough to go around <laughs> there's enough to go around and in sharing and in giving and in equal balance give and take that is where we find our joy and um and i'm always i try as much as possible to come from a place of love to speak from a place of love and so when i see atrocious things like what we saw happen on october 20th 2020 what we saw happen, it's, it's, yeah, it gets me, it gets me heated up. Absolutely. So maybe that's the activism you see. Absolutely. Thank you very much for that, Folake. Mm. I know that you've spoken a lot about your family and how when you broke out into the entertainment industry, so you almost felt a bit like a lone wolf. None of the people you loved, you said, loved what you were trying to do. And I'd imagine that when you have a father like yours, who was a very prominent lawyer fighting for Nigeria's independence, and then you having so many siblings, perhaps, you know, you taking this, this, this leap of faith was unexpected. I'm also hearing that you were quite a, an avid basketball player in your youth. Is that still the case? Do you still dibble-dabble on the basketball court? I do. I still play. In fact, I've taken it upon myself to go back on uh, this challenge uh, and um, I'm, I'm trying to dunk a basketball. But yeah, I played for college. I played for, for college in New York when I, when I went out there. And uh, I, I love the game. I really do. It's, I can play that all day. Absolutely. So I'd imagine that when you heard about the Nigerian women's national basketball team and their experiences not being paid monies due to them would have would have definitely yeah. uh, made you made you upset as it did many people. I actually I actually that's the first time I've heard about that. I thought you were going to talk about the, the, the amazing work they've been doing uh, oh. in, in the sports arena. I never heard about that. Just this week, they had released a video as a team talking about, you know, tens of thousands of dollars not being paid to all uh, to them after winning uh, different tournaments, monies that had been donated by three Nigerian banks also hadn't been uh, paid to them. And, you know, I personally, I'd reached out to the sports ministry and they said that, you know, they have the monies, nothing has happened to, the, happened to them. They're just waiting for the players to turn over their bank accounts. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a similar story we hear a lot when it comes to cherishing, you know, Nigerian athletes. You know, it was at the recently concluded Olympics, there was issues with, you know, Nigerian athletes not being able to get their sponsored clothing. So I do think that that's, there's definitely room for a lot that's of improvement. Yeah, that's that's um, that's very unfortunate. And if I'm going to speak the language that people who would um, hoard the money that these women so rightfully deserve, but I'm going to speak that language for a second. Consider if you invested properly into these women, into these athletes, athletes, and um, put them on on a level where they're competing and people are hungry to see the work that they're doing, imagine how much money you would get if you properly invested in the talents of these people. Instead of having a situation like me, where I have to leave the country <laughs> instead of stay home and, and, uh, and representing my, my, my country. 
just consider that there are different ways. There, there's a better way to do this. If money is still the end goal, there's a way. Again, it's about balance, give and take. You're holding on to to what like one ten thousand naira, and then you could possibly invest in this lady and make a hundred million. Like, mm-hmm. think, man. Absolutely. Oh. Oh. Go ahead, Steve. Uh, all right, Falake. I I know you. <laughs> I know you were uh, in Nigeria. You were in Lagos uh, around June and early July. I was in Nigeria, uh, and I am. Uh, I'm allowed. I'm allowed. Let me say <laughs> that. Where, yeah, and I'm aware that you recorded. <laughs> oh, say that again. <laughs> I said uh, I'm allowed. Let me say that. Where, where did you eat Abula? Uh, I don't know. I don't oh, know really? if I'm on a wow. name drop, but let's just say like I was in. I was. I was enjoying Abula every day. <laughs> <laughs> there are actually a few good places where you can enjoy Abula, you know, in Lagos and a few other parts of the country. Yeah, yeah cool you. you can't, you can't, uh, you can't, you can't, yeah, cool you. <laughs> <All right. laughs> but I was going to ask you, when you came, <laughs> <laughs> when you came, you, you, I think you recorded about two videos, which again comes back to your music career. Uh, my question to you, Falake, is, uh, where is this headed? Um, are we looking at a music career uh, that you are maybe trying to come back here and compete with the Tiwa Savages and the Yemi Aladis and Thames, etc.? Or are you focusing essentially uh, on the American market where you are already a big star? Big up to Tiwa Savage, big up to Thames and Yemi Alade doing that thing. Uh, I have a lot of respect for, for, for the women making waves in this industry, both in acting and, and in music. Uh, I don't have a plan. I didn't have a plan for acting. <laughs> I don't have a plan for music. <laughs> I operate on intuition. And intuitively, I take steps. And the steps have led me to my show, and it's led me to, to making music. Intuitively now, I know that my goal... Um, what I want to do, at least for the short term, is build a team of people in, in Nigeria, a team of creatives that I can work with, that I can um, use the platform that I have here in America to elevate. And um, I've actively been looking, hence the music videos that, um, that, uh, that, that I was working on. It's, it's, it's a passion project, but it's also an endeavor to, to find a core a core group of artists who are dedicated to the art as opposed to a quick box oh. who are passionate about, about the work and the quality of the work that they're doing. And um, I found a couple of people and um, I'm going to keep looking. I think um, Nigeria is full of so many talented people. And if, if my, if, if this, platform I have in America can can be of use and I, I would like to be able to give back in that way to those who are deserving and are willing to do the work, good quality work. So uh, in terms of music, I'm going to keep making music. I have a couple of producers that I'm really feeling out there in Nigeria and my music has to be made in Nigeria. I've tried to make it out here in America, but it, you need to understand what I'm saying. You need to understand the experience that I'm coming from. And um, I'm going to keep making music yeah. with them and, um, and just keep sharing it with the world. Falake, oh. or Lord Just a quick you. one, oh, Falake. It's okay. so nice to hear my name pronounced. Just, just a quick one, Femi, <laughs> if you don't mind. Thanks, thanks a lot, Femi. All right. Falake, when a, when, a colleague, when a colleague and a super talent is in the eye of the storm and is going through a challenging moment like Sister Tiwa is doing, what, what words of encouragement or circle uh, will you have for such a person? What's going on? Oh, a leaked, a leaked tape, a leaked sex tape uh, that is out there and it's all over the place. I think more than talking about Tiwa in relation to this tape, you need to talk about who leaked it because that person needs to face some repercussions. In this day and age where everyone has a cell phone and everyone has access to, to mass media, 
if we don't put an end to that, if people can release tapes like that and get away with it, that means they can do the same thing to you. So where does it end? I think the conversation, we need to start talking about the name of the person who leaked the video and make sure that there's some legal repercussions that they face. And um, my love to T.Y., she's an amazing talent. She's done such amazing work over the years. And uh, she deserves all the accolades. And she will continue to receive them, I'm sure. She is a huge talent. Volake Olofoyeku, I've really enjoyed saying your name. That, If you notice, you know, we've, we've mentioned it as many times as possible. <laughs> I've enjoyed hearing it. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. Wish you all the best with your future endeavours. Look forward to having you on the show again. Thank you so much.